If you're new to using Photoshop or if you want a refresher on Photoshop, this video is going to walk you step by step on how to get started and how to use Photoshop most effectively. I've personally used Photoshop every single day for about 15 years now and Photoshop dates back way to 1987. It's been around for a long time. And if you don't know what Photoshop does, it's created by this company called Adobe. They make a lot of softwares that work on the computer, tablets, and mobile phones too. Photoshop is designed for Mac and Windows PC, and they do have an iPad version as well. Photoshop is most commonly used for photo editing. It's a powerful, the most powerful photo editing app ever made. And you could also use it for design. So I'm gonna show you those two in this video. Photo editing first, what you could do with a photo, and then I'll show you design, basically how to create something using shapes and text that comes in really handy as well. And by the end of the video, if you do like my teaching style and you take some value from this lesson, I do have an entire course on mastering Photoshop for beginners and I update that all the time. So I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Let's jump in. Now, if you don't have the latest version of Photoshop, I do have a link to this page, which gives you a seven day free trial of Photoshop without any watermarks, the complete app here on Mac or Windows PC. And you could press start free trial and follow along with my video. And if later you decide to buy Photoshop, Photoshop is a monthly subscription. It's basically cloud-based. You can't just buy Photoshop outright. You basically have to subscribe monthly to Adobe here to get Photoshop. And I basically have a bundle package is called Creative Cloud. So I get Photoshop, Premiere, about 20 some different applications for one bundle. And this is after the free trial if you want to actually get Photoshop. If you already have Photoshop, you could obviously skip this and open up Photoshop. Let me go ahead and do that. And when you first open Photoshop, you could start two different ways. You could press new file here to start a new document that is completely blank, which I will show you when we create our graphic design or you could press open to open an existing image that maybe you have on your computer. So I'm gonna press open here and I've downloaded this image here that I'm gonna go ahead and open with Photoshop. So that's how you open an image and then we'll talk about what you could do with an image inside of Photoshop. If you do wanna follow along, I got that image from pixels.com. I just searched for a model picture. These are all free and I just downloaded this one here. You could just click and download any one of them and then open it up with Photoshop. So we'll spend some time with this image. I wanna show you the different things you could do with an image in Photoshop because that's the most powerful way. And then we'll design a graphic element and then I'll show you how to bring an image into that graphics at the end and tie it all together. Let me just quickly show you your workspace here in Photoshop. I'm not gonna go through details, just what you need to know to get started. On the left side here, you have this thing called a toolbar. If yours is collapsed and you just see one row, this little arrow brings up all the different tools. And within each tool, you could hover over to see what that tool does, and you could click on it and hold, and then you could see some of these tools have multiple tools inside of each tool. I'll show you what you will need those for in a second. Typically, I start with the move tool. So that's the very first tool. And the tools, different tools have different keyboard shortcuts, meaning if you press V on your keyboard, it will bring you back to the move tool. If you press B on your keyboard, it brings you to the brush tool. If you press P, it brings you to the pen tool. Okay, so they all have different keyboard shortcuts that you'll eventually learn over time. In the center here, this is what's called your canvas or work area. Basically your image, your graphic, anything that you're working on shows up right in the middle. And a very important part of Photoshop is this panel called layers. Photoshop basically works with layers where things stack on top of each other and whatever is on top is the foreground object and it's the most visible. I'll explain that when we work with graphics, it will make more sense then. And if your Photoshop doesn't look like mine, go to windows up here and then go to workspace and then you could set this to essentials workspace or reset the Essentials workspace and you'll get the same view that I have here. Okay, let's look at working with an image. A very common way you work with an image is changing the brightness and the contrast. If you come to image here, these are the different things you could do with an image just to get started, but adjustment allows you to do multiple different things that I'm gonna show you. One is brightness. These four, basically all this category, 
is things that have to do with brightness and contrast. Okay, I'm going to show you this first one. These are a little bit more advanced. Then we'll get into this set, which has to do with color, basically. And you also have this set, which is auto. So if you want to auto color or auto brightness, auto contrast, those are what shows up here. I'll start here, go to brightness and contrast and click this. And you get this menu right here that I'm going to bring over. And brightness is very simple. If you go this way, your image gets brighter. If you go this way, it gets darker. Contrast, on the other hand, if you go up, you see it's bringing the black areas down more. It's making blacks more black. And if you go this way, it's doing the opposite of that. So that's contrast. You could also try auto here. Most of these boxes have an auto setting and I could preview on and off just to get a before and after. It does look much better. So I'm going to press OK and let the auto take place. Now you have the same thing with image under adjustment with different things for saturation and vibrance. Let me show you how this works. Saturation and hue, this menu, basically allows you to change multiple different things with your image. I'll show you saturation first. If you bring saturation up with this, it brings a lot more color to each area of your image. For people, this is not a very good option, but you can do a subtle amount, like three or four points. Hue basically changes your entire color here. And this is again, more useful when you're working with landscape and objects. So I'm gonna leave that alone here and I'll press okay. You also have this thing called vibrance, adjustment, vibrance. This is fantastic because you have saturation, the same thing I just showed you in the other menu. But now you have vibrance, which is perfect for skin tone. You see how I could mute the skin tone, making it black and white, but I really could bring it up and you could see it's bringing some color, but it's not doing this kind of unnatural look that saturation adds when you're working with a person. I'm gonna press okay. Again, preview on much more subtle than saturation, press okay. Now, once you get more advanced, what you wanna do is you wanna work with adjustment layers. Come down here, click this. And adjustment layers let you apply those same thing, brightness and contrast and vibrance, but as an adjustment layer on top of your picture. Because if you do it this way, it leaves your original layer, which was our background image alone, right? We're not destructively editing that in any way. And we could make adjustments this way with an adjustment layer and turn those on and off anytime and your original image stays intact. That's the correct way to use Photoshop with any of these kind of adjustments, but a lot of people just get started with the image menu and then move on to this menu, which is your adjustment layers, and there's a ton of different ones available. Now, let me zoom into my image. So to zoom in, there's a zoom tool right here. I'm gonna select it. Again, keyboard shortcut Z. You could just click multiple times to zoom into your image. And to zoom out, just go on top here and press the minus sign and then you could zoom back out, okay? I wanna show you this tool right here. It's called Spot Healing Brush. I'm gonna press and hold on it and choose the very top one right here. And you get this thing called a brush right here. You see, right in the middle there. Now, if I use my brackets on my keyboard, it could get bigger if I press the right bracket or the left bracket makes it smaller. If you look up here, that's the brush size. So it's making the brush size larger or smaller. This is basically a brush. I could click this though and change it this way if I wanted to and have more advanced settings. But just to show you what this does, this is for retouching skin. So let's say I wanted to get rid of this mole right here. I'm gonna make this small, click, and it just disappeared. That's kind of the power of Photoshop. Photo retouching, just by clicking, using this spot healing brush is very, very powerful. Now, for advanced photo retouching, I do have other videos about that. This is just for very basic things where you just wanna take some blemishes off someone's face, but just make sure you don't overdo this. A lot of times when they say a photo has been Photoshopped, that means somebody overdid this part. This is one of my favorite tools, Spot Healing Brush. I use it all the time. There's also a blur tool too. So you could choose the blur tool and all these kind of work like a brush. Basically you have the same brush settings on top and then you could kind of like blur parts of a picture. So if I wanted to blur her eyes, for example, for some reason I could go ahead and do that or blur this section. 
So a lot of these tools kind of work in combination. So burn, for example, again, I have a brush and it makes part of an image darker. So I could kind of paint like this if I wanted to do that. Doesn't make sense here, but you get the idea. A lot of different ways to touch up a picture. And let me zoom out. And the last thing I'll show you with images before we move to graphics is how to cut someone out of a background. Let me show you this tool that I use every single day. It's called Quick Selection Tool. I'm gonna select the middle one here. Okay, there's three different types of selections with this one. I'm gonna select this one. And I don't even have to do anything. I just have to press Select Subject. Okay, I'm gonna just press that to show you what it does. It basically selects my subject for me and then I could cut the subject out of the background. Now, typically in more advanced tutorials, I show select and mask to ma basically make this better. But if I just right clicked over here or control click, I could just say new layer via copy. Okay, let me just select that. And look over here, it created a new layer. Now I could turn off my background and this subject is now on a transparent background. It's really that simple to cut someone out. Now I could basically put another layer here as a new background, but I'll show you in the graphics section how I'm gonna bring this and put them on top of a different project. Let's move on to creating a graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So go to file, save as, give this a name. It's gonna save it as a Photoshop document. So you could always come back to it and press save. Okay, now it's been saved. I'm still gonna leave it open though. Let's go to file and let's create a new project and create a graphic project. Now, when you create a new project from scratch, even if you don't have anything open, it's gonna show you a whole bunch of different shapes that you could basically choose. So if you're making, for example, let's say I'm making a YouTube thumbnail, I'm gonna choose film and video and I'm gonna choose this size right here. 1920 by 1080, that's the size of HD video, for example. And I'm gonna name this Photoshop thumbnail. Everything else here, I'm just gonna leave on the default setting here. But if you're doing things with photo or print, just make sure you look at the different sizes. Sometimes they show it to you with pixel, sometimes inches, and sometimes these other settings as well. I'm gonna just go ahead and press create. This is gonna just create this blank document for me. And as you can see, I just have a background layer that this created because my setting was set to a white background. So that's what I have now. So first, if you have a blank background, but you want a different color, here's a really simple way to do that. Go to edit, go to fill here, and then it's gonna choose your foreground color. Every time it says something about foreground color, that's this box over here. This blue box is your foreground, this red box is your background. You could always switch these as well or pick any color. Just to show you, I'm gonna click this foreground box and then I get this color picker. So I could have any color I want. Let's go with this like darker blue here. I'll press okay. And then let's go to edit, fill, and I'll leave it on foreground color and press okay. So that's how you change the color of the background. Now I'll show you how to add text and shapes on top of this background. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a new layer. So to do that, just come down here. There's a plus sign on the bottom. It says create a new layer, press that because you always wanna work with layers on top of each other, so you have independent control of each layer. With this top layer here, I could type text by selecting the text tool. There's a tool for that. T is the text tool. I'm gonna to select it right over here, and I just want horizontal text. And you have font, you have font size, and you have other settings and color as well. So in this case, I'm gonna change the color to white, okay? Now I'm gonna click right here, and I'm gonna type here. Now, if I select this whole thing, again, I have this text menu where I could select the different size. Let's go to 72. It's not big enough, so let's grab this T and slide up. We'll make it much, much bigger, maybe this big, and then press the check mark. Now, the move tool that I mentioned that comes in handy with graphic, I'm gonna select that and then move this to maybe the center here. You could always double click to and put this in multiple lines just by pressing enter. So I'm gonna press enter here, press enter here, put this in three lines and select it all and center everything like this. Press okay. And then I'll use the move tool to bring it in the middle of my page here. And I'll actually make this extended bold. And you have this setting box over here that comes in really handy with text where you could basically change all kinds of different advanced settings like spacing between lines or even spacing between characters. 
could be done here and making things more bold and things like that. So I'll press the check mark. If you don't press the check mark, by the way, it doesn't apply what you're doing. And I'm gonna move this over here and let's say you wanted to add a shape, then I'll show you how to bring that other person here and put them on this side as well. But there's a whole shape tool that comes in really handy. You could have rectangle and all kinds of different shapes and even custom shapes up here gives you all kinds of different shapes in this menu. So I have a check mark right now. So if I drag, it's gonna add whatever my custom shape was. I'll delete the custom shape. A most commonly used shape is like a rectangle. You could kind of make boxes and different things like that if you just click and drag. So I can make kind of like a square here. I could drag and you know make a rectangle here. And you could see every time I didn't have to create a new layer. It just created it for me. And I could turn each layer on and off and have individual control. So if I click the top layer, I just made this shape. I do have a fill color, which I could change over here, right? I can make a yellow, for example. Now, if you change your mind, you could select any layer and press delete. You also have redo and undo under edit. If you just go to edit, you could always undo whatever you did last and redo to bring it back. All right, I'll delete this layer as well. Since I opened this image and I still have the last one open, see, I could toggle between two different projects, basically. This one is not saved yet. You could see there's a weird red dot right here, meaning it's not saved. This one I did save, so I could close it and come back to it. If I close this one right now without saving it, I lose everything I've done. But right now I wanna show you with two projects open, you could drag from one project to another project. So I'm gonna take this layer, the top one, grab it, drop it on top of this one right over here. Now this one is huge, so it covered everything. So let me go ahead and zoom out. I'm gonna just zoom out a bunch. Now with this layer selected, go to edit, go to transform, and then we wanna reduce the size. I'm gonna choose scale here. And I get these kind of boxes where I could just shrink something down, okay? Now, if you don't hold shift while you do this, it may distort your image. You see how it's distorting? So I'm gonna hold shift so it actually keeps everything together. I'll bring it down here. And then I'm gonna use the move tool and bring it to my picture, okay? And then let's go ahead and use the zoom tool again. Press plus and zoom back in. Now I'm gonna choose that layer again and let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and choose our transform tool, edit, transform, and let's scale it again. And let's make her a little bit bigger here. And this kind of imperfections that I did not fix, we're just gonna make sure they're kind of out. So I'll put her over here. Actually, it probably makes sense if she's on this side and the text is on the other side. So I'll put her on this side. I'll press the check mark. I'll grab the text layer and use the move tool here and bring it to this side. Now I have to do a little bit more work here to make it more presentable, but just for the sake of this video, let's say we're done with this project and we want to basically post this online or maybe send it to a client, post it to a website. All I have to do is go to file here and remember save as, saves it as a Photoshop file, but that Photoshop file is not postable. It's just a way so you could come back to it. What you wanna do is go to export instead and go to export as. This is the menu that I use all the time. And this lets you save it in a format that is presentable for the web and for TV and things like that. And that is JPEG or PNG. PNG could hold transparency. So for things that need to be transparent in the background, you choose PNG. I a lot of times choose JPEG. And quality, they've made it really simple now and you could choose just very good or excellent. I typically just choose excellent. The higher you go with this, the bigger file size. So this is 300 kilobytes. A good version is 111. So if you're worried about things on your website taking up a lot of space, you could reduce the quality. Everything else I leave the same and I just press export right here. It's gonna ask me where I want to export this just to my desktop, give it a name and press save. And there it is, it's on the desktop on my computer right there. It's a JPEG and I could post it from here to anywhere I like. As I mentioned before, I do have an entire beginner's course to Photoshop for mastering Photoshop. And I will put that in the link below. And I hope you found this lesson useful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.